Here we go. So type two, they're called monic trinomials. Mono meaning one. I'm not gonna, I'm just saying trinomial with one. The one is in the front. So remember, I taught you how to do the signs. So this is what we're gonna do first. I see a positive number here. That means that my signs must be the same. So I immediately put X and X. Whatever sign is here goes right there. And this one has to be the same as the one I just dropped down. So I have negative, negative. Now I'm gonna list all of the pairs of numbers whose product is 24. So it's one and 24, let's see, two and 12. 24 is divisible by three, right? It's three and eight. 24 is divisible by four, four times six is 24. 24 is not divisible by five. It doesn't end in a five. So that's out. Six, I already have six. So you're not gonna write six and four if you already have four and six, it's pointless. So these are the only four pairs of numbers whose product is 24. Anything else would be a repeat. So now my signs are the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add all my pairs together and try to make a 10. 24 and one make 25. 12 and two make 14. Now I wanna point something out. If you subtract 12 and two, you make 10. So if you did the wrong thing with these pairs and subtracted them instead of adding them, you got screwed and you're gonna pick the wrong pair. Eight plus three make 11. Six plus four, ah, ding, ding, ding. I have a winner. Six plus four make 10. Put the bigger number here and the smaller number here. You see, what does it matter? The signs are the same. Trust me, the bigger number has to go first. I will show you why in the other examples. It's done. Do you have to check it all? Do you really need to check that x times x is x squared? Uh, no. Do you need to check that 6 times 4 is 24? Uh, no. That's the reason I pick this pair is because their product is 24. What should you check? Check the rainbow. Do the inner and the outer. On the inside, you get negative 6x. And then on the outside, you get negative 4x. That is negative 10x. You don't really have to check that either, but just make sure that the middles work out the way it's supposed to. And I got my minus 10 in the middle. All right, so this is the second one. Now, there's no number in front of the X, but there is a number there. There's a one there, right? You don't have to write the one, just like there's a one there. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna immediately just put X and X. And then whatever sign I see in the middle there, I'm gonna just put it here. Now I just have to determine whether that one is a plus or a minus. But if I put a plus here, a positive times a positive is not a negative. These signs have to be different from each other. This one I already got for free. So I know this one has to be different. Whenever the last number is negative, your signs were different from each other. So now all I have to do is list the pairs of numbers that multiply to 30 and then fill them in and figure out when I get a one. So let's see, I know that one times 30 is 30. I know that two times 15 is 30. Let's see, remember, go in numerical order don't skip around, go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, until you stop and, and you get repeats, then you know you have them all. 30 is divisible by three, it's three and 10. Four, let's see, 30 is not divisible by four. I can't cut this number in half twice, so four is out. How about five? Yeah, five times six is 30. And then six, oh, I got it, repeat. 30 is not divisible by seven. As soon as you get a repeat, like if 30 was divisible by seven, I would have already had it on the list. As soon as you hit a repeat, don't keep going. Oh, seven, eight, nine, 10. You already have them all. This is how you know, as soon as you get one repeat, it's over. Don't write more pairs. These are the four pairs. Now, my signs are different. What do I do when I have different signs? I don't add these, see these signs are different, right? One guy's a minus, one guy's a plus. When the signs are different, you subtract. So I'm gonna subtract these pairs. 30 minus one is 29. Don't do one minus 30, start with the bigger number. 15 minus two is 13. 10 minus three is seven. Six take away five is one. Boy, finally. Well, there you go. Put the bigger number here, put the smaller number there. Now you're saying, why do I do that? I'm not going to do that. What the hell does it matter where I put the number? I'm going to put the smaller number there and the bigger number there. And I'm going to show you that it doesn't work. Positive 5x 
negative 6x. This is negative 1x. You have a positive here. This is the reason that you put the bigger number first, right? How do you subtract numbers? I mean, when like the sign number rules, when you had this. Here, you do seven take away three, which is four, and you keep the sign of the larger number. That's why you put the larger number first. You're doing six take away five, which is one, and you're keeping the sign of the larger number. So you must put the larger number first where you drop the sign so that it comes out correctly. So now when I check, I have positive 6x minus 5x, that is a plus one. So now I got the middle to work out. Positive six, take away five is positive one. So you know that it worked. All right, so the third one, I have x squared minus 7x minus 60. A negative here means my signs will be different. Before you even start this question, x and x immediately. That sign, drop it right down. It would help if I could do it pretty, right? Boom, drop it straight down. I don't want the arrow there. Now, this one has to be different than that one because you have a negative here. I am multiplying a negative. He's like, but why? I don't understand. If these, if they were both negative, a negative times a negative is a positive. So this can't be a negative. It has to be different. It has to be a plus. Now, look, at this point, I already know what the pair is. But, and, you know, some of you might be able to figure it out. But you should always write the pairs down to make sure. I know that one, one will always be a pair. One times 60 is a pair. And you say, I'm never going to pick that pair. It could be a pair. You can't leave this one out. Sometimes this is the answer. Now, 60 is divisible by 2. If you cut it in half, you get 30. 60 is divisible by 3, 3 times 20. Now it's going to start getting tricky. The question is, is 60 divisible by 4? Basically, try to cut it in half twice. Half of 60 is 30. Half of 30 is 15. So 15 four times would make 60. Is it divisible by 5? Hell yeah. It ends in a zero. Anything ending in a zero or a five is divisible by five. So it turns out to be 12. This is why a multiplication table will help you. Or a calculator, which you can use on your final. So 60 divided by six is 10. Now, seven. 60 is not divisible. Seven times nine is 63. And seven times eight is 56. So you miss, you don't get 60. So seven's out. Same thing with eight. 8 times 8 is 64. You miss, right? So 8's out. Same thing with 9. You can't get a 60. So you keep going until you get a repeat. So then I'm up to 10. 10 I have. So that's it. I stop. These are all the pairs. It's a lot. Now I'm going to do this quick. I know I need to subtract them. 59, 28, 17, I'll write that one, right? The signs are different. I have to subtract. That one gives me 17. I know I need a 7, so I know it's not these. 15 minus 4 is 11. Aha, 12 minus 5. I could stop. 10 minus 6 is 4. There's my winner. The only way I'm going to make a 7 is if I did 12 and 5. And remember, you have to put, you keep the sign of the larger number. So you must put the larger number first and then the smaller number second. And now make sure you get negative 12x in the middle and you get positive 5x at the end. Negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7. You do not multiply this whole thing out. Why would you do that? X and X make X squared. You need to check this. You need to check 12 and 5 makes 60. You pick 12 and 5 because it makes 60. So you don't have to check that. You don't check it all. Just make sure you catch the negative 7 in the middle. And then that's it. All right, so the very first, the very the fourth one, I was gonna say the very final one. You have x squared, four xy, and three y squared. This this one is very advanced because it has an extra letter there. And let me tell you, this extra letter over the years, I have watched it absolutely destroy people, and they get very confused about what to do with that extra letter. So my advice to you is, screw that letter, <laughs> just get rid of it. 
Do it without the letter there. Ignore the other letter. There's a Y and a Y squared. I don't give a shit. Just get rid of them. They're all just throw them away. They're all gone. I'm going to do it without the letter there because with the letter there, it's going to mess you up. So my advice is do it without the letter. The letter goes away. No more letter. I'm going to put X and X like I always do. Now I'm going to figure out my signs. The awesome thing is if, they're, if, if both of these are plus, then both of these are plus. This is a, if you ever see <clears throat> if you ever see a plus here and here, you immediately put a plus here and here. <laughs> you just drop them both down. They will always they have to a positive times a positive is a positive. And when you add a positive and a positive, you make a positive. Now, all the numbers that multiply to be three, <laughs> there they are. What about two? Yeah, two times what is three? I don't think so. You're done. You have no choice. It's three and one. Three and one. Remember I told you it could be a one. It's never the first pair. Here you go. It's the first pair. It's the only pair. <laughs> so it has to be the first pair. Now, I did not solve the original question. So the thing is, how did I just help myself? Well, I helped myself very easily. All I have to do now is take whatever letter was here and just put it there and there. <laughs> You're like, no way, that doesn't work. X times X is X squared. 3Y times 1Y, 3 times 1 is 3. Y times Y is Y squared. There's no way this works, bullshit. 3XY, now alphabetical order, 3XY. Don't write YX. Write it in alphabetical order. And then at the end, right, make the rainbow, 1X and 1Y. 3XYs and 1XY makes 4XYs. So I do it first without the letter so I can get my pair and my signs right. And then all you do is just throw the letter here and here. Don't, you know, what you don't do is put Y squared here. This isn't going to work. You're going to get X, Y squared. It has to be Y and Y so that you get the X, Y in the middle. If you, if you try to write a Y squared here or here, it's going to fuck it up. So you have to put Y and Y to make Y squared. And then you get the middle term to come out right. All right, so this is how you cheat. You drop the letter off completely, factor it so that you have your signs in your pair, and then you go put the letter back at the end, one here and one there. So the final answer to the original question, so I can just ignore all this now. That'll have a Y, and that'll have a Y. And you don't need the one there. I mean, it was there. So this makes that. All right, and I checked it, so you know that it works. All right, so type three, difference of perfect squares. I wrote the list of perfect squares up there. One times one, two times two, three times three, et cetera. So you should always, when, when you're doing type three and four, it's very helpful to have the list of perfect squares there to refer to. If, if the numbers in front of these are not on that list, then it's not a perfect square and you can't do it. You know, if, if this had been a 21, this, this problem cannot be factored. It doesn't, it just doesn't work. You have, it has to be a perfect square. So here's, here's the secret. You, you put your two parentheses down. I know my signs are going to be different. Now, how do I know that? Because I have a negative here. So my signs are going to be opposites. They're going to be plus minus or minus plus. It's not going to matter. What goes in the front and the end will be basically the square root of these. We didn't do square roots yet. So what number times itself makes four, two and two? You don't put one and four. You have to put something times itself. That's the whole point of perfect squares. Four is two times two or two squared. Now, 25y squared. Well, to make 25, I need a five and I need a five. And then I need a Y and a Y. Notice I am building a copy. These are identical. All I'm going to do now is just put different signs. So two times two, four, something times itself. Five Y, five Y, 25 Y squared. One dude gets the minus, one dude gets the plus, and it doesn't matter which. In the middle, I have negative 10 Y. And at the end, I have a positive 10 Y. Those cross out. That's why you have no middle term. This type, type three, are always binomials. You do not have three things. You have no middle. You always just have two, 
two. That's how you recognize this type. It doesn't have a middle part. All right, so something times itself, something times itself to make the front, to make the end. Now, same thing here. This one looks a little more complicated and advanced, but it's not any more difficult than this one. I need nine X two. So I'm gonna put something times itself. What about nine and one? Nine and one are not something times itself. I need to make 49. So count <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, seven times seven. So seven M, seven M. Something times itself makes the guy in the front. Something times itself makes the guy at the end. Now, one dude gets the plus, one dude gets the minus. It doesn't matter which. You can do it any way you want. You can put the minus first, or you can put the plus first. I don't care. So you built you built a copy, but you just had different signs. This is going to introduce the next one, because the next one, you're going to build a copy. But instead of making the signs different, you're going to make them the same. All right, so this is called the difference of perfect squares. You build a copy and you just make the signs different. So type four, perfect square. This is very similar to type three in that you're gonna do something times itself, except instead of the signs being different, the signs are gonna be the same. How do you recognize it? The first number, perfect square. The last number, perfect square. How do you know the perfect squares? You write the list of perfect squares. <laughs> I'll write it for you. Now, what about the middle? Who gives a shit about the middle? You ignore it. This is the only time you ignore the middle. Don't even look at it. You're like, what do you do with it? You don't care. It will tell you the sign, but you're looking here and you're looking here. Okay, so how do you factor this? What you do is you put your two parentheses down and you do the same thing you did with type three. I need something times itself to make 16 X squared. Something times itself. That's not eight and two, and that's not 16 and one, all right? Something times itself to make 16 is four. Four X and four X makes 16 X squared. Now, I have to make a positive one, so I need one times one. There's nothing, one's a perfect square. There it is. So now, what are the signs? Remember what I said, if you have a plus and a plus, drop them down. Yay, how easy. Now, I wanna check. My middle, my inner of the foil, is positive 4x. On the end, 1 times 4x is another 4x. 4x and 4x make, son of a bitch, yes, you get the middle term. If you build this thing correctly, the middle term takes care of itself. You don't try to worry about the middle. This is why I said to ignore it. All you worry about is making the first dude and making the last dude. I have to get the first term right and the last term right. And the middle will take care of itself. So look at how easy this was to factor. 4x, 4x, boom. 1 and 1, boom. It's that simple. Now I'm going to move over to this one, which looks a lot harder and a lot scarier. It's not any more difficult to do. You have 25, it's a perfect square. You have 9, it's a perfect square. So I'm good. The middle, 30 is not a perfect square. I don't give a damn about 30. So I'm going to put 5 and 5. You got to put 5x and 5x. Right, 5x and 5x make 25x squared. Something times itself. Now you need 9y squared. So I got to put 3y and 3y. Now, what are my signs? I know they're the same. I have a positive. They have to be the same. They will always be the same. So they're going to be whatever that guy is. It's going to be negative. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Y times Y is Y squared. Now, check one thing. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15, and you have X, Y, alphabetical order. Now make the foil rainbow. Negative 3 times 5, negative 15. X, Y, what's negative 15 and negative 15? It's 0. No, it's not. If you lose 15 and you lose another 15, you lost 30. Oh, son of a bitch. That's what's in the middle. The middle will always take care of itself. If you build the first and the last terms correctly in the product, it will just come out right. You should check this part to make sure you got the middle right. I mean, it's not a bad idea to check, but you have to take on faith that the middle will work out if you build it right.
something times itself, pow. Something times itself, pow. So you get the guy in the front, you get the guy in the end, and the middle takes care of itself. So this is type four, perfect square.